this passage. Um, let me test your memories a little bit. Uh, some of you may remember back in the 60s. Some of you weren't even thought of back in the 60s. But let me, uh, let me uh, test, test your memories a little back bit about TV. And there wasn't a lot of TV shows back then. But, but maybe you'll remember this one. It started out every episode with the same line. Good morning, Mr. Phelps. Do you, do you remember that show? Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Let me give you some more. Somebody got it there. It's, it says, good morning, Mr. Phelps. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, mission impossible. That's right. Here's where it's supposed to come in. The tech department got a little... <laughs> a little crazy this morning. <laughs> but but Mission Impossible, do you remember that show? You remember that show? And, and it really has, they've made some movies for you younger folks that you might, Tom Cruise played uh, the head instead of uh, Peter Graves. But, um, and each each time they would, they would always accept the mission, but, but each time they uh, ask him to accept the mission, they say what? This tape will destruct in five. Oh, self-destruct. Thank you. Yeah. We know you watch now. <laughs> I was testing you. <laughs> Four or three, and it was self-destruct, right? And every time, you know, Mr. Phelps would would get together that special team. He had he was in charge of the IM Force. Does anybody know what that stands for? Impossible Mission. The Impossible Mission Force. And he would get his specialists together, and they would. What? They put a plan together. It'd be this super, very complicated plan. And by the end of the show, they would have turned the Mission Impossible into what? Possible, Possible Mission. That's right. The Possible Mission. And that's what we're going to be talking about a little bit today. Making the impossible possible. Now, that show, they always got to have a plan. They always put it together. You know, it would end the same way, right? You knew at the end they were going to what, succeed, right? That the, that the impossible was going to become the possible. But here in real life, when things seem impossible, they kind of struggle with whether or not they're going to be possible at all, don't they? We can get discouraged a little bit. We can get downhearted. But in today's scripture, it tells us what? All things are possible with God. You know, that, that line, that one line is plucked out of a, a, a piece of scripture that uh, if we were all plugged into it, it's a story of the angel coming to see Mary and telling her that she was going to be the mother of God. Now that seems kind of impossible. And I'm sure she thought like, mm -hmm, I'm, I'm a virgin, that ain't happening. You know, and, and, and but it but it seems impossible, but we come to find out later on in the story that is indeed what? Possible. It's possible. Because all things are possible through through God. Thank you. So this is me interactive, so you need to get your <clears throat> clear your boat voice and, and work with me here. So all things are possible through God. And and sometimes in our life, what we, we think things are impossible, right? You can be honest, you probably at some point say, been in some situation where you, you thought something was impossible. I'll never be able to do this. And, and in some ways, you're, you're partially right. Right? Or at least we seem like we think it's impossible. And like I said, you're, you're partially right. You can't do it. But with God, you can do all things. Right? All things are possible with God. Right? You see, because where, where man's ability ends is where God's ability takes over. You see, it doesn't take a lot of faith if you can do it yourself, does it? It doesn't take a lot of faith to believe that God's, God can do it if I can do it myself. If you say, I can lift this 20 pounds, it doesn't take a lot of faith to believe I can lift 20 pounds, does it? But if I put 200 pounds down there and I say, I can lift that, the only way that's possible is what? <laughs> and a whole lot of help from some people. <laughs> but yes, through God, maybe I can do that. But that's not a possibility for me anymore. 
Yeah, I can't lift 200 pounds. So, in other words, where my ability stop is where we, we better recognize God's power and God's ability to work in our life. You see, on that platform of the impossible is where we meet God. Because it's there that our faith is tested. It's there that we're able to see where the impossible becomes the possible. Say that with me again. The impossible becomes possible. That's right. And that's what we're going to talk about today. George Mueller once said that, that faith does not operate in the realm of the possible. There is no glory for God in that which humanly is possible. Faith begins where man's power ends. You see, we're so much, it's so much easier for us to see God when something impossible happens. We call them what? Miracles. Very good. We call them miracles. You know, when like, I didn't see that coming. How'd that happen? It wasn't me. I definitely couldn't do that. And those are the miracles of life. And you see, well, well we, we took that piece of scripture earlier when we talked about Mary. It wasn't the only time that God showed up, showed up in the Bible and performed what? Miracles. miracles. The impossible became what? Possible. possible. Keep that in mind. The possible became, the impossible became possible. You know, if we look through the Bible, we see, see the story of Abraham. God came to Abraham in his old age and said, I'll make you the father of what? Many nations, right? It was so improbable that Sarah laughed, right? She chuckled because she knew that ain't happening, right? Uh-uh. He's old. I don't know how you, but I'm old. I don't know how that's going to be. But God did. And God took the impossible and made it possible. That's right. When Daniel got thrown into the lion's den, nobody was betting on Daniel. I can tell you, if you were in Vegas, you had no odds. Nobody was going to take Daniel in that, that predicament, right? It looked like the end for Daniel, didn't it? He was going to be dinner. He was in an impossible situation, except for with God. Because when God took over, the impossible became possible. And Daniel walked out of the lion's den, didn't he? When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego failed to worship the idols, King Nebuchadnezzar, he got mad, right? And he had the fire stoked to seven times its normal heat. And he threw them in the fire. And what happened? The impossible became possible. He saw four figures in there and three walked out. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The impossible, surviving that fire, became possible with God. Right? When, when the Israelites had left Egypt and Pharaoh sent his army after them, and they, had, they came to the Red Sea. And here comes Pharaoh's army. And you got mountains to the other side. There's no escape. Their fate is not looking good. Right? They're in an impossible situation. What are they going to do? There was nothing they could do. But God parted the sea. They crossed over. And then he closed it back up on Pharaoh's army. The impossible became what? Possible. When Jesus walked among men, he healed the blind, he healed lepers, he made the lame to walk, he turned water into wine. All those things humanly are in But he made them possible. When Mary and Martha called for Jesus and said, Lazarus, your good friend is sick. Come quickly. He took his time. 
And when he got there, Lazarus was what? Dead. dead. As a matter of fact, he'd been dead for a few days. They had already had the funeral. He was buried or in a tomb. And Jesus said what? He said, remove the stone. And they said, it's going to stink. It's going to smell bad. He's been in there a little while. We don't need to be doing that. And he said, move the stone. And they moved the stone. And who comes hopping out of the tomb? Lazarus. He's still bound in, 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 the, in the burial cloth. And he comes hopping out of the thing. Because, was that possible? That's not possible. If not except through Christ who makes all impossible things possible. Somebody just say amen because I just need to hear it. Amen. amen. Yes, sir. <laughs> Even when they hung him on a cross, they had to be thinking, the religious leaders had to be thinking, we finally got rid of Jesus. He's been a thorn in our side for a while. Inside, they had to be celebrating. They thought they had won the day. The disciples had to be discouraged. They had followed Jesus for years now. The man they thought was the Messiah was laying in a tomb dead. They had to be discouraged. It had to seem like a hopeless situation. But on the third day, on the third day, the tomb was empty. Is that possible? That's the Is it? Did God take the impossible and make it possible? You see, that's what God does. When, when Jesus got his disciples together and said, hey, I need, you, I need you to go out and make disciples of all nations, not just Jerusalem, not just the surrounding neighborhood. I need, I need to take just this group right here, and I want you to go out and change the world. I want you to spread the gospel. I want you to spread it to all nations. Did that seem possible? Does it seem possible to you? It seems pretty impossible when you consider it. I mean, these were just a collection of fishermen and tax collectors. They were nothing special. They weren't gifted orientators. They weren't somebody who'd go out and deliver a powerful message. But Jesus said, go out and preach the gospel and change the world. And I think the fact that you're sitting here today means it worked. Didn't it? He made the impossible possible. But he did so because they had what? What does it take? Faith. It takes faith to make the impossible possible. It does. You can't do it with fear. You know, fear and faith don't go together. They just don't mix. It's like oil and water. They're, just, they're not going to mix. You have to have faith. Do you have that kind of faith? Do you believe the impossible is, the, is possible? So, preacher, you don't know what I'm dealing with. I got, I got folks, I got children or neighbors or folks I know who are, who are addicted to drugs. Folks I know who are alcoholics. People I, I know they don't believe in, in Christianity at all. I've been praying for them for years. I, got, I know people, even myself sometimes, feels walled in, feel overwhelmed with anxiety, don't know a way out, don't know the answer, don't know where I can turn or what I can do. There's some days I just feel covered like a wet blanket is on me and, and I just feel weighed down. I don't know what to do. I just feel hopeless. But then I have to remember, all things are possible with God, aren't they? They certainly are. You say, well, I've been praying for that person for a long time. Nothing. He, he's, he's unreachable. He can't be changed. I've been trying. I've been praying. I've, been, I've done everything. I've invited him to church six times. He'll never come. He'll never come. Don't quit on them, folks. It's not your timing. It's God 
Einstein. You see, it's not you that makes the impossible possible. It's God who makes the impossible possible. You know, if there was ever anybody who was unreachable in the Bible, it was Saul, wasn't it? He persecuted Christians. That was his hobby. That was his passion. You got anything you're passionate about? Like you just live to do like hunting or fishing or, or gardening. That's your passion. Singing. I just like doing it. I just I can't <laughs> wait till the next time I get to go fishing. Or the next time I get to go hunting. Or the next time I get to meet with this group of, of, of young ladies. Or, or uh, y'all still young. These young ladies. And, and, and talk about people. I mean, I mean, have civilized discussions about what's going on in the community. But, but I can't wait to do that. That's my passion. That's what I like to do. That's what Saul liked to do. He liked to round up Christians and, and, and kill them. That was his passion. He looked forward to it until one day he met Jesus on the road to Damascus. And he got thrown off his horse. And he was made blind. And he was blind for how many days? Some of you Bible scholars out there. Three. He was, he was blind for three days. And he got his sight back. And he was a changed man, wasn't he? He no longer persecuted Christians, but he became one of the most vocal pro-Christian people. In the New Testament. He wrote a good section of the New Testament. We would have, this would be a whole lot smaller, a whole lot lighter if we just took out Paul's writings. You see, he went from wanting to kill Christians to wanting to grow Christians. The impossible, the unreachable, the un unobtainable became what? The possible. The obtainable. God took the impossible and he made it possible. Mm. Mm. So many of us in this coming week, the months and years are going to face the impossible. Things that are going to overwhelm us. Folks that we've been trying to reach who just keep fighting us. Sometimes it's our friends. Sometimes it's our children. Sometimes it's our neighbor. And if you've invited them six times, invite them seven. Invite them eight, invite them nine, invite them ten. Whatever it takes, pray for them all day, every day. Pray for them here. Pray for them in the car. Pray for them at home. Pray for them while you're cooking, showering. Pray for them. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Keep plugging. Keep chugging. Keep going. Don't stop out of fear, but move forward out of faith. Right? We're told in the Bible, I can do all things through Christ who what? Amen. Amen. Christ who strengthens me. Because through Christ who strengthens me, the impossible becomes the possible. Does that mean everything that you want and everything that you pray for is going to happen? No. Does that mean you should stop praying? No, definitely not. You know, uh, I heard a preacher say one time, all prayers are answered. Some are answered immediately. You know, we like those, don't we? I like it when I pray something the next day, it's just like, ta-da! And some are answered eventually. They require a lot of prayer. Sometimes years of prayer. And some are answered eternally. And those may not be the answers you want, but they're the answers that God has. And that doesn't mean God can't make the impossible possible. He just chose not to do it at this time. But that doesn't mean He doesn't hear your prayer. That doesn't mean He doesn't doesn't understand you, doesn't feel your pain, doesn't feel your anxiety, doesn't know what you're going through. Remember, Jesus walked among men. He felt things that a man felt, right? If we look at the story of Jesus uh, going to, to 
raised Lazarus from the dead, it says the shortest verse in the Bible, what? Jesus wept. He felt human emotion. He created you. He created you. He knows what you feel. He knows also what you've done or haven't done. Right? And you know what? Either way, He chooses to love you. But He asks that you be faithful. He asks that you believe in the impossible. It's easy to believe in the possible. If we had our, if we had our, our, our pig, we'd say, give me the possible. I'll, I'll take care of that one for you. I, I can hold that one. I can do that. But God says, hold on to the impossible. And realize I'm working there too. So when you're faced with those situations, when you face those things that, that seem to overwhelm you, when you face those things that seem impossible, Remember, that's where you're going to meet God. That it is on the, the platform of the impossible that God shows up. That God performs His miracles. If you could do it, it's not a miracle. Right? But when God does it, when we can't do it, and God shows up, it's a miracle. Because God makes the impossible possible. possible. And He did it all throughout Scripture, and He still does it today. You know, there are times that I, I, I don't feel like being here because I don't feel well, not because I don't want to preach. But there have been days that I've had events on the way to church. And there's no reason that I should be able to stand up here and give you a message. But it's at those times, especially those times, that I know I truly, truly know that God can take the impossible and make it possible. Amen. So when you, when you are feeling like you can't do it, remember you're probably right. But God can. You're going to have to make a lot of choices in your life. And you're going to be faced with all kinds of events or things that you're going to have to choose one way or the other. Like Pam was talking about. How do you get around these things that society tells you you can't do? And there's two answers. You can live in fear. Or you can live in faith. Choose faith. Where the impossible becomes the possible. Say it again. Possible. Say it with feeling. Possible. That's right. The impossible becomes the possible. And if you truly believe that, and if you embrace that, won't you join me as all God's people say, Amen. Amen.